In August 2017, a horrific crime took place in a small town of Kwekwe. A man named Godfrey Sibanda, 38 years of age, stabbed his wife to death with a kitchen knife in their bedroom 11 times, claiming that he had mistaken her for a lion. Godfrey and Molly Maimba, a 25-year-old, had been cohabiting for three years in Amaveni Kwekwe, but they had no child. All seemed well and they had no history of violence, but on the night of 4 August 2017, the couple's neighbors heard screams and loud noises coming from their house. Gift Muraza, their neighbor, rushed to their house when he heard Molin screaming and calling for help, and he found Godfrey on top of her, stabbing her. He had stabbed her 11 times all over her body. Another neighbor, Graka Mugari, witnessed Mr. Muraza fighting Svanda to disarm him. Moling then tried to get up from the bed but was bleeding profusely, so she collapsed. Godfrey then rushed to the kitchen and took the gas cylinder and threatened suicide and opened it and people ran out of the house. The police were called and Godfrey was arrested and charged with murder. He pled not guilty by reason of insanity and he told the court that he had a history of mental illness and that he had been seeing visions of wild animals attacking him and his family. He said that on the night of the crime, he woke up and saw a lion on top of his wife, and he grabbed the knife to defend himself, only to realize after she had died that he had attacked his wife. A psychiatrist who examined Godfrey confirmed that he was suffering from a psychotic disorder, possibly triggered by stress and substance abuse. He said that Godfrey had hallucinations, delusions, and paranoia, and that he could not distinguish reality from fantasy. He also said that Godfrey had no remorse or empathy for his actions, and that he was a danger to himself and others. It was also confirmed by Sibanda's family. It was also confirmed that Godfrey's family had a history of mental illness, since his mother is also a psychiatric patient. His two brothers are also mentally challenged and that they have been seeking help from traditional healers for a long time. The judge accepted the psychiatrist's report and ruled that Godfrey was mentally unfit to stand trial. He ordered that Sivanda be detained at a mental health institution for an undefined period until he was deemed fit to be released. He also expressed his condolences to the victim's family and friends and said that the case was a tragedy for all the involved. The verdict sparked mixed reactions from the public and the media. Some people sympathized with Godfrey and said that he needed help and treatment, not punishment. Others criticized the justice system and said that Godfrey had gotten away with murder and that he should have been locked up in prison or executed. The victim's family and friends said that they were devastated and angry and that they wanted justice for Moline. The case of Godfrey Sivanda is one of the most shocking and controversial cases in Zimbabwe's history. It raises questions about the state of mental health care and the prevalence of domestic violence and the role of culture and superstition in our society. It also shows the human cost of a brutal and senseless crime and the lasting impact it has on the lives of those who are left behind. May Molin's soul rest in eternal peace.